Hello, I'm George Call. Welcome to part two of Forest Falls. Okay, so part one is uh, lock in and part two is um, balance, but I had to do a little shape changing, which I should have done in part one, but you know, sometimes you come in, you see a fresh look of it, you go, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. So I started this session moving a few things around, not too bad, down here in the falls area. And uh, then I started working on my balance. So stay tuned on how I say, how do we determine what is too bright, what is too green, what needs to be more gray green to balance with the surrounding colors. So that's what I did the majority of today. And it's such a very important part. I put it in the category of foundations is to, is to balance things. Now, um, Tomorrow, I, I call it detail day, but still I do a lot of balancing on that one. So there's always a little bit of bleed over. But uh, let's uh, talk about that later as I go through it step by step. So get outside and paint. Paint with your friends, get critiques, and don't be intimidated by white canvas. All right, let's start painting. Hey y'all, welcome to part two of uh, Forest Falls. And when I got in here this morning, I said, this is a little too dramatic. It's taken up too much space. So I put this little stripe in and these guys to try to say, okay, the fall's there, but don't oversay it. So I think I might lower it also. So I'm making uh, some shape changes from yesterday. I didn't catch it yesterday. Sometimes when you come in, you get a fresh look. Yeah, you can see it. So um, I'm going to make a few more changes on shapes, and then I'm going to get into color balance, making sure these values work together. All right, so let's make some ultra blue. Transparent oxide brown. <coughs> a little bit of viridian. And... I think this tree comes over even more. And this comes in this way a little bit. And here and here. And we have some good darks over in here. And over in here. All right, that'll get me started. I'm going to save these darks and maybe use them later. So that was my shape change. Now I can get into balance. So we're going to have to get these trees in, the aspen trees that were a little stubborn yesterday. Let's see if we can do that today. So, let me get this cleaned up because I like a very clean mixing area and encourage you to do it instead of making little piles everywhere. Okay. I think we had kind of a, it's kind of a greeny yellow so I'm going to make some Naples with some of that slop green I had left over yesterday. If you don't have any left over, uh, mix up some Ultra and um, Yellow Ochre. But a lot of Yellow Ochre. And a little bit of uh, Permanent Green. Let's see what we can do here. I think I need to change the angle here. I do. I'll lighten that up with a little blue next door here. And lay it down. And I know there's a lot of little limbs everywhere, but I think I'm going to save that till part three because 
That's more of the detail stuff. And you can make little crooked things here and here. I think I'm going to run something off of here. Hope you can see that. Okay, now we kind of know where that's going to be. I've got some other aspen trees over in here that start up in here. You see how I'm twisting my brush as I go down and just kind of helps out with these aspen trees. They're not perfect little guys that are straight. They have little crooked things going on with them. And then I have, I think, this guy running off to one side over here. And let's reinforce Mr. Aspen Tree here. Comes down, starts it here somewhere. And I do have a light over here. I don't know what all this stuff is, but it's some sort of a messy thing going on over here. All right. Let's see how we're doing time-wise. Okay. It's time to start spreading out here a little bit and see what else we can do to balance this paint. I think what I want to do is get some intensity of color in here. There's some great greens going on, as well as some background trees back in here. And I am going to work on that. And some little guys going off in here. Little things going all over the place. And I need some intensity of this guy down here. He's kind of kind of important. There's another guy here. I mixed up some um, I call it rust color. It's a it's a light uh, light oxide red. 339. Boy, it is opaque. It, it just lays down and there's nothing you can do about it. It really shows up. Now the question is where to go. So let's start now at the bottom down in this area where there's rock. Okay. See how useful uh, some of these colors are that you saved from the previous day? And you can sometimes put them to use. Alright, so I see down here kind of a yellow ochre brown thing in this area. That's too strong. So I need some light gray. And I think that's a little bit better representation. I took a little bit of that rust that was left over. And I've got some good darks down here. So I'm going to see what I can do here to work this. I need to get this bottom part done here that was in the rim. I had a little lip on my holding device here.
So be diligent and get your little edges done, Mike. I better practice what I preach here. There's an edge there that needs to be done. All right. I'm using a number 22025, and we're going to put in some rock shapes here. And just some areas of warm. And I'm going to have to get some darks in between these to make a realistic idea of what's going on down there. But I'm paying a lot of attention to where my these warm gold colors are. And I see some duller ones down in this area here. And then I see a streak of it kind of up in this area. I'm going to make it even lighter. Gray, white, gray, white, and Put some of that in. And bring it over. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Working good. I need some green and some grass stuff. So I'm going to use some emerald, some light viridium, white. Some viridian to dull it down, permanent green to dull it down, and I'm going to say right in here we have some greens, and over here we have some fresh stuff coming out of here too. Okay, let's make some more of this because there is a slew of this stuff all over the place. Time to get that in. So I'm doing the emerald, permanent green, light gray, light gray. And I'm going to get some darker parts of it by getting some of that dark mixed in here from my previous pile. And I'm going to just not there. I need some yellow ochre in this business. At least on this side I do. More yellow ochre. Viridian, light viridian, yellow ochre. There we go. Boom! It's kind of an aspen tree over in here somewhere causing this to have this nice subtle Color. Oh, I just love it. Oh, that worked! I love it when it works, and back here it works too. But the, the edges are a little too hard, so I have to scrumble them out here a little bit. In other words, soften them with the side of my brush. Okay, now I see that over here too. And I'm going to be putting that in some of this over in here too. I'm going to intensify the color with a little bit more emerald on this side. There we go. I'm not covering up all my darks, but I'm laying in some of this really, really nice aspen color. And I also see this starting to show up over here and here. Here. I'm going to 
to get more yellow ochre. A little bit more light viridian. White, gray, white, yellow ochre. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. A little bit more intensity with the green. A little bit more emerald. And I see a lot of this stuff just covering up this area up on top. I'm going to need some darks up there too. I think what I'm going to have to do after I get all this done is to eventually get some darks in here. But I think I need some yellow ochre type stuff. I'm going to add a little yellow oak, um, cad yellow medium right in here. And there's some really good yellow back in here. And I'm going to just really push it a little bit. And I'm going to put some down in here too. Soften some edges here with some of this yellow that I see in here. Oh boy, it's starting to make sense. I think there's a little bit of water right over in here. Coming through just a little bit, but I may have described him too much, so I'll get this guy taken care of. In there, and I think there's a dull log back in there, so I'm going to get some transparent oxide brown, transparent oxide brown, and a little bit of that rust color, and put that here and. There. And here. I don't know. I, I may have screwed that up. All right. Now we need to darken some areas here. Let's go back to this dark I had earlier, which was, I don't know, blue, brown. Meridian. It's not as dark as the other stuff, but there are some darks back in here that are saying we're back here. So this is part of the balance thing is to describe these darks where we need them. And I see some up in here. Up in here and here. This is keeping me busy. All right, I have so far stayed away from working on top of the waterfall, and it's time to get in there and do something about it. And I do have some darks that come down. Like that, and like that, and I need to get some lights on top, so I've got a good white in a few places, and I'll put some here, and I need a good one right in here, and here. Mm -hmm. There's some darks on the aspen trees. Let's get that done since I have some right over here. See this area just kind of go like this. I think this is where limbs used to be. And 
Now they're just dark spots. And bigger dark spots that are here and there and here and there and I will try some of that in some other places such as here and here and just darken some of these things with some darker color right down in here. The bases of the, these aspens get kind of darker. And I'll put a few dots up in these guys. Okay. Now let's get into going back to these rocks and scrubble, whatever scrubble is, it's stuff that's left over from high water, and work in this area down here. So I will gather myself the courage to get down there. I'm getting back and looking at my reference, and those darks are pretty significant. I think I've got the right brush in my hand but I don't have the right mixture. So let's go back to transparent oxide brown, blue, green, and see what that does. A little bit more brown, a little bit more blue, green, let's get to working here. And you see now I'm carving into some of these darks and I'm keeping some light and some dull. See how I just ran over some of these to kind of dull it out so they're not all the same because I see some as pretty bright and then others as dull. See some purples in there. Let me get that worked in there a little bit better. And it's kind of a it's purpley gray rocks in here. Just a few places. I'll put one in here too. One thing I do see is some water coming in here and here and coming over. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to shrink the size of it a little bit. It's some sort of a branch thing here that's causing some attention. So I'll get some brown in here too. Let's get over to the other side, and I see some, some rocks in here. I'll use, see if this purple and gray that I have here can help describe some of these rocks right in here. And then I'll do a darker gray right in here. Darker gray, please. Come, come, come. And I better put some blue in there. Okay. Blue and gray. And do that and do that. Do that and do that. And get some green in that thing. Over the purple. Let's have a lot of moss or something in there. And I'll do some more of this here. Make it darker. Sorry.
and another one here. That would be a rock, I guess. I'm going to sneak in some darks in between everybody. Back to brown, blue, viridian. And we have some pretty significant darks here. Come on, I need a good dark. Right here. And right here. And I need some going in here. As well as here. Just really concentrating on what this reference shows me. And I'm tying it in to best of my ability to get these in there. It's a good dark right in here that has to be described. And in here I see some, some darks also. Darker than what we have. And then Boom, 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 with the dark. There's a lot going on with the darks over here. You need these little light branches in there too. And I probably need more and I can get those in tomorrow. To soften these edges, some of them are a little, little too strong. So I just scrambled it. Whoop! Back into my stool. Okay. Boom! 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 The big dark is right in here. And I'm going to use some of this purple stuff purple gray I have and I'm going to scrumble some of that right in here because it's a little too bright for the running water so I just it may not be the right color but it, I think it's the right value and that's what really counts And I think I've got a rock right here, so I'm going to get some more purple, gray, and I'm going to make this a rock right here. And I'll make this a rock, get some purples on these guys, but not too much. I'm going to keep it in the dull family down here. Let me get back and check this beauty, but I better check my time. Oh boy, we're running low. Two minutes and 42 seconds. Whew. Still so much to do. But I think we have made tremendous progress on this thing. This has really come a long, long way. Okay. I've lost some of my brights here. And I'm going to fix those off camera. And then we will get ready for tomorrow and uh, doing some detail. Thanks so much for coming by for part two and uh, I'll see you in part three.